how did you prepare as if you didn't have enough to bite off directing this and and meeting with Jordan and helping make it happen? How, how did you prepare for Phil Knight playing another icon? In well, this interestingly, the, the Jordan meeting, although brief, you know, actually was the catalyst for what ended up being a, a, a very, you know, laborious reconstruction of, of the movie in many ways. The Phil, Phil, there was, and no one was playing Michael, which I, as I said, I think would be impossible. Uh, with Phil, it was kind of like, you know, I didn't want to try to SNL, you know, where I get the exact, you know, mimic the look and the, you know, and, and try to, I wanted to sort of capture the spirit, but Jason Bateman doesn't look a lot like Rob Strasser and Chris Messina doesn't look like David Falk and, yes. you know, but I knew that Phil is, is famous and well-known and his hair actually was a little more blonde than I did the, but I wanted it to sort of not be like, I had a blonde wig in the last duel and that was the only thing that seemed, anybody seemed to talk about. So it was like, maybe I won't do that this time. Maybe I'll do a less distracting move. And I really was interested and drawn to the fact that like, Phil's a very complex guy. He's, he built this huge company. He's this massive Titan of industry. He real like revolutionary and sort of pirate. And then he became like a steward of the ship. And that's an interesting thing. And also just being like a Buddhist and a massive capitalist are <laughs> odd things that are in contrast with one another. And I thought, and the truth is you have to have somebody in the story, like the true story of this deal, I'm sure is much more nuanced and probably a little more boring and a lot of conference rooms and discussions about it. But the, I, you have to have somebody who, who has some resistance to the protagonists, you know, movement forward. And also the truth is like people love to make fun of the boss. You know, like in my experience, you know, that's just how we are. Uh, and, and I thought this is a guy who would both uh, ha get a lot of respect for what he'd done, but also you could see people working with him going like, this guy's going to preach to me about Buddhism now and lecture me about, you know, and give that, that kind of energy and tenor and spirit to what I thought it felt like Nike might have been at that time, which is a sort of scrappy place with a bunch of people trying to sort of change the rules. And, you know, they had a philosophy. Companies didn't have philosophies companies their philosophy was like you you know punch the clock and make a profit it wasn't like you went down to the tire factory and was like but what's your mission statement you know and now this is the era of the modern corporation is like whether they do or don't have you know philosophies they all have consultants who say here's what we think works as a mission statement you know and and phil kind of was an early pioneer in that and and so i tried to play him in a kind of funny appealing and and tip the hat to the significance of the decision he made. And also a guy who could like, I hoped, you know, take a joke, which it turned out he could. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to three Eastern for free.